Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending Kern Council of Government's 2023 Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony. My name is Bob Smith, and I am Kern Cog's chairman for 2024. Before we begin our celebration, Kern Cog lost one of our board members this past weekend after a long battle with cancer. Arvin Mayor Olivia Trujillo joined our board in January of 2021. She was a committed representative for the community of Arvin and her presence will definitely be missed. We ask that we keep Olivia's family and friends and community in our prayers. Thank you. Tonight, we honor several outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated leadership, compassion, and dedication in making their local communities and the entire region of Kern County a better place to live and work. Our recipients this evening prove that it only takes one individual or one organization to help make a significant difference in the community. Individuals like Scott Taylor and Regina Houchen. Yeah. Commitment to providing clean water and energy in their communities is beyond expectations. So the dedication and hard work from the city of Bakersfield, hoorah, to develop calm and safe traffic patterns for our neighborhoods. And the dedication of Eric Ziegler and Charlie Fivecoat to step out of retirement to help their communities <laughs> prosper and be safe. These recipients and other most notable winners deserve the recognition of this ceremony and beyond. Fortunately, KernCog is not the only organization to recognize the important work performed by our award recipients. Tonight's honorees will also be receiving certificates from the Kern County Board of Supervisors, California Assembly Members Vince Fong and Dr. Jasmine Baines, and State Senators Shannon Grove and Melissa Hurtado, and Congressman Dav David Valadeo. Some of these people are either in the audience themselves or have representatives here to offer their warmest regards. Please hold your applause until every person is recognized. Please stand as your name is announced. Kern County Board of Supervisor and Kern Cog Board Member David Couch. Did David make it? I have not seen him. Hello, David. And State Senator Shannon Grove. Hello, Shannon. Thank you. Mayors and city councils from the cities of Bakersfield, Maricopa, Shafter, Taft, Tehachapi, and Wasco. Everybody up. Thank you. I would like to thank the hardworking individuals from Kern Council of Governments that make this program successful. You met Rochelle and Vina Jawasiri, Victoria Romero Valadie, Suzanne Campbell, and Becky Napier as you checked in. They helped organize the presentations you will see tonight, and Providence Consulting assisted with managing any mailings, coordinating photography, registration, and requesting certificates. And our photographer, Jacob Vega, will be taking photos for us. Without these members of our staff and the assistance of a consultant, this program would not happen. Let's give them a good round of applause. I would also like to acknowledge the creative work of employees at Kern Government Television, better known as KGov who have helped us develop this year's presentation highlighting the programs and individuals being honored for their outstanding achievements. The regional awards are again being recorded and will be replayed next month on KGov. This gives us an opportunity to share the work of our honorees with all of Kern County. What really makes this event special is that our recipients can celebrate with family and friends. So thank you all for coming to provide your support to the honorees and to celebrate the wonderful gifts they have bestowed upon us. Let us begin. They say it takes a village, but for the community of Lamont, it took one man with a vision and drive to provide the best possible service to the residents of that village. 
Lamont PUD is a public utility district providing drinking water and treating wastewater for a primarily Latino or Hispanic severely disadvantaged community of approximately 18,000 people located in unincorporated Kern County. Scott Taylor came to the Lamont Public Utility District during a time of immense turmoil and strife. LPUD had 12 general managers in 11 years prior to Scott being hired. The agency struggled with employee embezzlement, significant deferred maintenance, and work on the infrastructure. Numerous negative grand jury reports, financial strife and issues, and complete turmoil within the agency. Scott turned all of that around in seven years. The agency now has zero findings in their audits, no grand jury reports, the infrastructure is being improved and the district is now stable. Most recently, Scott was able to secure a $31 million grant from the State Water Board for four replacement water wells, including treatment systems for the district. This is monumental and historic in that nothing of this nature has ever occurred in this district in its 80-year existence. Scott has formed strong working relationships with the board members, improved relationships with community members and ratepayers, and continually strives to provide better conditions for staff both in the work environment and compensation. But most importantly is that Scott genuinely cares about the community he serves. He has stated, regardless of your color, status, or position, everyone deserves clean, safe drinking water for them, their children, and their children's children. Overall, Scott has accomplished what many thought was impossible. He turned the Lamont Public Utility District around, secured critical funding where no funding existed, and created an environment of trust and stability. He works every day to provide for those who deserve more than they are receiving and sacrifices himself for the good of the Lamont community. We congratulate Scott Taylor, General Manager of the Lamont Public Utility District with a Regional Award of Merit for local government. Amazing work. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <clears throat> this is the closest I'm gonna get to the Oscars, so I'll make it brief. <laughs> I mean, with a mug like this, I ain't got a chance, right? Uh, just briefly, the video is pretty clear on some of the drama we've had. If you've been in Bakersfield or Kern County for more than a day or two, then I don't have to explain to you the history of Lamont and some of the drama we've had. Uh, we've worked pretty diligently over the last several years to try to turn it around and to grow up. Those are my terms, to kind of grow up and, and be a real, live, uh, respectable public utility. Now, the one thing I want to point out, and I'll, again, I'll make it brief, is you notice I keep saying we. I mean, there's a lot of heavy hitters in here. So the folks that are the heavy hitters, you know, Couches and Jim Jervis, I don't know if he's here, but those guys, you can be the best leader on the planet, but if you don't have a great team around you, I mean, you're not gonna succeed, you won't make it. So it's important that I take like 20 seconds to acknowledge those folks. So for example, I've got a great board that works really well now. We had some strife before. Three of them are sitting right over there. My board members, it's huge. I mean, there's people here that report to boards. I mean, think about it, right? My board members don't always agree with me. They don't always agree with each other, but the one thing they do is they work together for the betterment of our community as reflective in the success that we've had. So the board members are really, really important. The other thing that good leaders know is that you have to surround yourself with a great team. Where are you at, Curtis? Where's Curtis Skaggs? There he is, right there. Where's Jessica? Jessica Ritter, I've been fortunate enough to be successful to be able to find the right people. Again, if you've been in Bakersfield longer than a week, then you know Curtis Skaggs over D. Jasper and Associates. <laughs> This guy walks on water and no, he has no extra room for none of you folks. <laughs> so don't even think about calling him. <laughs> Jessica Ritter works for SiteLogic. She does solar. 
I'll be honest with you. I'm not a salesman. I'm just telling you the good team that I've had. I'm not that savvy with solar. She's been real good to show us the benefits and some of the savings and and the um, the benefits that you can get from that. So as you can appreciate, surrounding yourself with the right team. Now, let me finally say this, and one of my staff members is not here. All of those other people aside, if you don't have a great staff, then you will not succeed. So on behalf of Lamont Public Utility District and the Lamont community, the customers, the constituents, and quite honestly myself, I'm pretty humbled, you know, I just mentioned this to Suzanne. Look, and I'm no show pony. I'm just a freaking plow horse, dude. You know, I, I just go to work every day and plow the fields. I'm not real good at dancing around. So on behalf of the Lamont Public Utility District and the team that I have who have supported me, my board members and the community as a whole, we're very, very grateful that we've finally been recognized for busting our ass and doing the right thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. The city of Tehachapi sits in the mountains between the southern San Joaquin Valley and the Mojave Desert. This location does not fit in the Bakersfield or Los Angeles media market due to reporters having to travel an hour away to cover a story. But there is so much beauty and events going on in this little mountain community that the city had to create a media source that could provide transparency to its residents while also building trust and providing the most updated news on a consistent basis. This is where Tehachapod was born. Podcasts have become an important platform for sharing information and have become the fastest growing media platform globally. This service provided the best solution in sharing local government updates on capital projects, infrastructure maintenance, and city council updates. But it has evolved to do so much more. Community-based organizations and nonprofits are also able to utilize Tehachapod to get their messages out to the public as well. Tehachapod features monthly episodes highlighting the Chamber of Commerce and locally owned business updates. And the Community Theater makes regular appearances to share upcoming plays and musicals. Tehachapod has also focused episodes on regional partners to help promote East Kern's economy featuring Rio Tinto, Edwards Air Force Base, Strato Launch, Houchin Community Blood Bank, Kern EDC, NASA, CSUB, and many others. The podcast will reach 100,000 individual downloads in early 2024 because the conversations that take place embrace the entire community, addressing their concerns, answering their questions, and highlighting the work put in by members of the community. Tehachapod has become the voice of Eastern Kern County, allowing the community to hear the latest information being shared by its local leaders. Please join us in congratulating the city of Tehachapi as a recipient of the 2022 Regional Award for Local Government. Accepting this award is the city's community engagement manager, Key Budge. Uh, communication between government and the people is so important and doing a great job. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. That's your, there we, that's how we start the conversation. Uh, it, this is really exciting and to kind of follow on the, the previous, it's about team. There is no individual that makes any of this happen. It starts at the top um, and we have our entire city council present tonight. Our mayor, mayor pro tem and both council members. Thank you for the support that you give the city. That trickles down to our city manager and his thoughts translate to the rest of us and give us the opportunity to excel. And my job in community engagement and communications is to connect with the community. So the city of Tehachapi and the greater Tehachapi area um, is very unique. They don't want to be big city. They want to be rural. They uh, appreciate being a part of the Tehachapi fiber. So we have to connect with them. They don't have to connect with us, but we have to connect with them. So we find different ways. The podcast is one of those platforms that we've utilized. This is our fourth year. We're approaching 400 episodes uh, recorded, 
and it has expanded. Senator Shannon Grove was our very first guest. I don't know if you uh, remember, but you had a public safety pow uh, power shutoff workshop, and I interviewed you, and that was episode one, year one, just before the COVID started. It quickly transitioned the podcast into something to get information out regarding the pandemic. And then we realized that it's much more than the bureaucratic stuff that goes on within a municipality. Capital projects, yes, we talk about it. New asphalt, absolutely. But we also want to connect with our nonprofits, our small businesses, and the special people that make up our community. So we have those conversations. And it's, if, I, I can't tell you how many times someone's going to come on the show and says, well, send me a list of questions. It starts with hi. We start there, and then it's a conversation that just flows. We listen to what our guests are saying, and that's the direction that we take. It's connected and resonated with our community where we're approaching over 100,000 downloads. We've got less than 10,000 population, okay? We're reaching and having a longer conversation about important issues, topics, and what's important to our community most of all. So uh, thank you for this recognition, but it's a part of a team. I'm one of five hosts, Maya Costa, Greg Garrett, Corey Costello, uh, who are here, are a part of the hosting team. Ashley Whitmore, who didn't make it, but she is our fifth member. So we try and utilize, between the five of us, a different way to connect with the community. So we appreciate this recognition. Say thank you very much. In a community that was built on its abundance of petroleum, it is only fitting that its local high school create an academy to promote and teach Taft's youth the complexities of the energy industry. Taft Union High School created their Oil Technology Academy in 2000 in hopes of guiding students to consider careers in energy production. Participation in the academy is a three-year commitment and along with learning about the petroleum trade, the students are encouraged to realize their full potential by emphasizing high standards of academic excellence and personal growth. So the students can become competitive, competent, and contributing members of society with high moral character. The academy's founding members, Rick Woodson and Fred Holmes, started the academy process with a fund of $5,000 in 1998. Taft Oil Tech Academy is the first academy in the nation to focus on the petroleum industry and is the only high school chapter of the American Association of Drilling Engineers. The academy was recognized as a CPA Lighthouse Top 15 Academy from over 400 in California in 2015 and a distinguished academy for one of the top academies in California in 2021. The strength of the Oil Tech Academy comes from the huge support it receives from donors and local petroleum companies known as business partners, along with approximately 40 mentors that donate their time to the Academy students. Oil Tech gives students an opportunity to be mentored by someone who has been successful in their career and who loves seeing students grow in knowledge and wisdom. Ted Pendergrass, who serves as the Academy's coordinator, along with Taft Oil Tech students, volunteer at several events in Taft throughout the year, assisting with such events as Taft's annual Boomtown Days held at the West Kern Oil Museum, where students give up their Saturday to showcase the past and future of Taft's heritage. The 2023 Regional Award of Merit for Community Involvement is presented to Taft Union High School Oil Technology Academy. Accepting the award is Ted Pinnegrass, Rick Woodson, and Fred Holmes, all three right here. Well, I had uh, written a little speech and I, it was all covered there. So do you all have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm Ted Pendergrass. I am the coordinator. Um, I'm just uh, one part of, of this academy. We have uh, six other teachers in the academy, uh, English teachers, math, science, social studies teachers. Uh, we have a, a fantastic uh, support group in our administration that uh, is, is uh, Super nice to have. You don't hear teachers get up and say that too often, but uh, we're, uh, I'm, I'm a lucky man when it comes to that. Uh, we have about 140 students in the academy right now. Uh, we have a, a small senior group because we were trying to recruit during distance learning and, and that was extremely difficult. We should be up to about 160 students next year, back to our full, full size. Um, but it is a partnership between the, the state of California through the, which is really, if you think about the state of California sponsoring an oil technology academy, you gotta love that to start off with. <laughs> and, and, and then to, to get the accolades from the, from the state as being a, a lighthouse academy and distinguished academies and all of that, uh, I, I, I do, enjoy, do enjoy doing that uh, to them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and probably what I do more than anything is, is uh, we provide opportunities. Um, it's, uh, you know, taking kids to um, AADE meetings and leadership and uh, having uh, Shannon uh, escort our, our students around uh, Sacramento for a day and, and they want to come back. They're, they're asking me, when are we going to do it? Uh, we uh, <clears throat> turn sophomores loose, we teach them a little bit about history of oil, and we turn them loose and their docents at the museum. And, and sometimes uh, Alan and I uh, work on that together, and it's a little, uh, little hair-raising to, to start off with. You, you don't know what you're going to get, uh, and, and they always do a fantastic job. Uh, it's teaching them how to get a job, it's teaching them how to keep a job. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun, but uh, really all I do is provide the opportunities and the kids shine. Uh, that's, that's really, really it. So uh, on behalf of the, the oil tech students, because they're the ones that do all the work, they are, um, I, I accept this and, and thank you very much. Kevin Harmon dedicated 29 years of service to the city of Shafter in the Engineering and Public Works Department. His service commenced as an assistant engineer in 1994. Although not a traditionally educated civil engineer, he quickly learned the profession and accepted a lead role in designing numerous public infrastructure projects. His success and reputation ultimately led to his promotion to city engineer in 2002. As city engineer, Kevin continued design work and assumed a lead and critical role in overseeing infrastructure planning and development to support economic growth and the creation of thousands of diversified jobs for Shafter and the surrounding region. These developments include the wonderful industrial park and industries located near Minter Field. Kevin has also had a significant role in the quality of life projects and improvements, including new and upgraded parks, resurfaced streets, sidewalks, and storm drainage systems. These improvements benefited current residents living in the core city, new residents living in Gazamir Grove, and even those living in outlying areas that lacked funding for basic infrastructure, including clean water and sanitary sewers. Through his service to Shafter, Kevin has become widely acknowledged and respected for his hard work and skills while upholding the highest ethical standards. He also mentored and developed other city staff engineers. His knowledge, commitment, and contributions will benefit Shafter for decades. Kevin retired from the city of Shafter in December 2023 to explore new opportunities and spend more time with his family. The city commends Kevin for his years of public service and dedication to Shafter and wishes him success and fulfillment with his next adventure. Kern Cog congratulates Kevin Harmon with a Kern Regional Award of Merit in Transportation. Thank you. Congratulations, sir.
30 years of working CAD, I'm a little bit blind, so. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It has uh, been an honor and a privilege to work for the city of Shafter for these many years. Uh, former city engineer, city manager, current legend, John Gwynn, hired me in uh, 1994 as a staff engineer and then mentored me for well over a decade. He was a great example of a small town engineer and I've always appreciated his guidance. The city of Shafter had a vision of prosperity and economic growth and we worked towards those goals. During my tenure, I worked alongside some stellar people in the service to our community. I made a lot of good friends and colleagues. Many of them are sitting out there right now. And I thank them for the many years of friendship and support. Together, we completed a significant amount of projects for the both large and small for the benefit of our community. I would also like to thank the uh, city council and city managers, both past and present, for their continuous support and faith in our team. I was very much glad to be a part of it. Thank you. In their continuous efforts to expand public safety for all roadway users, the city of Bakersfield adopted a neighborhood traffic calming plan to increase safety for the bicyclists and pedestrians. Traffic calming refers to the use of traffic control strategies to help reduce the negative impacts of motor vehicle use, alter driver behavior to reduce undesirable driving practices, and improve conditions for non-motorized street users. The Neighborhood Traffic Calming Plan provides a comprehensive toolbox of solutions that the city can use to respond to requests concerning speeds, cut through traffic, and other localized traffic safety issues. The program is intended to provide realistic and flexible solutions that are context appropriate and improve safety and quality of life for everyone using the city streets. The City of Bakersfield uses a three E's approach when considering possible solutions for improved traffic safety. First is engineering, a variety of traffic calming devices that redesign the street to control traffic volumes, decrease speeds, create safer walking and bicycling conditions, and maintain or improve an attractive streetscape. Second is education, by alerting people to ways that they can ease traffic problems by reducing their speed, choosing to bike or walk versus driving their cars, and maintaining awareness of their surroundings. And third is enforcement, Enlisting the help of local law enforcement to focus efforts on specific streets to increase community awareness of speeding problems. Community members can identify areas of concern and submit a neighborhood traffic calming request form to the City of Bakersfield and the City continues to offer community workshops and town hall meetings as a means to provide education on the program and encourage input from its residents on what areas of concern they may have. The City of Bakersfield is truly trying to address the safety issues surrounding our neighborhoods, especially when it comes to bike and pedestrian safety. They are to be commended for having a safety first, safety always priority in all their future planning. This is definitely something near and dear to my heart. And I thank Mr. Strakalus for working very hard on it and moving it forward. Congratulations to the city of Bakersfield for their neighborhood traffic calming plan, accepting the Richard A. Maxwell Award for Public Safety, City of Bakersfield Public Works Director, Greg Strakalus. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman Smith. Um, thank you to the Kern uh, Council of Governments as well. I'm gonna stick with the theme for tonight, vision, hard work, and teamwork. Um, thanks to the vision of our city council and our mayor to do something about um, safety on our roadways. Safety, it's, it's no secret that the city of Bakersfield, the st statistics for um, roadway safety uh, haven't been so great, but um, with the vision, of uh, the city council and of course the leadership of our uh, city manager's office and Mr. Christian Clegg and Gary Halen who are, are here as well. Um, we 
put together a neighborhood traffic calming program, which was adopted uh, back in February of 2023, and with a specific focus of trying to streamline some of the traffic calming measures, road safety measures, to implement into the community and work with the community on, on those um, specific measures. So in, in the, we hadn't installed a speed hump since 2013, but in the last nine months, we've installed eight speed humps, two, tr uh, two speed tables, about a dozen radar flashing feedback signs, and we've done about a couple hundred enhanced crosswalks. And, and that's just the start, right? We've got a long way, way to go. We've got 150 plus square miles to cover. Um, so um, we're, we'll be looking for the COG support in some, uh, some of those projects as we move forward. Uh, but I, I do want to thank everybody, including the COG, for this recognition. Thank you. They don't make them like Chief of Police Charlie Fivecoat anymore. And if they do, then they were most likely trained or mentored by Charlie himself. Throughout his career, Chief Fivecoat has demonstrated a passion and dedication to public safety and public service, as well as mentoring the next generation of police officers and law enforcement leaders. Chief Fivecoat's career spans over 33 years of public safety experience and serving his country. He is a veteran of the United States Army Airborne. He worked seven years as an energy sector corporate security director responsible for domestic and international security operations. He also served as the corporate security manager for a major agricultural corporation. And to top it off, Chief Fivecoat spent 16 years in multidiscipline academic teaching, including management, political science, and administration of justice courses. Chief Fivecoat came out of retirement to assist the city of Wasco with their police program. He has also served other cities within Kern County, such as the city of Shafter and Taft, as well as the Kern County Sheriff's Department. While working with the Sheriff's Department, he developed policy and procedures necessary to meet FBI accreditation standards for the Sheriff's Bomb Squad, which included conducting training, interagency response agreements, explosive storage, and render safe procedures for improvised explosive devices. Charlie believes in exceptional public service in all public agencies. He knows the value of building and instilling confidence in those he serves, and that good government is by the people and works for the people. He leaves a positive imprint on the hearts and communities he has serviced. He is an eternal optimist that is true to his word and a friend to many. Kerncog is proud to present the Richard A. Maxwell Award for Public Safety to City of Wasco's Police Chief, Charlie Fivecoat. Great work. Good evening, everyone, and a uh, very dear friend of mine, Lyle Martin, former chief at the Bakersfield Police Department, has always given me good advice, and he says, when you do public speaking, be brief, my brother, be brief. <laughs> and, uh, I'm hoping that I can do that because my city manager is watching me. Uh, this has been such an incredible journey. It, it was so interesting, December, 7th of 22, uh, the city manager and I had been talking about the prospect of building the new Wasco Police Department. And a lot of my friends, people that I've worked around and with through the years, they said, you're absolutely out of your mind. Why would you do that? And what I would like to say to everyone here tonight, there's a, a couple things, but Law enforcement in my heart and in my mind, and I believe in the citizens of this county, we believe that it is an honorable profession, that it's absolutely necessary to the safety and security of our society, and that there has to be people out there that will go to work every day, do this job with the understanding that they may not come home. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And for all the naysayers that said we couldn't do it, we heard things like we couldn't get cars, we couldn't get guns, the COVID pandemic had destroyed the supply chain, we couldn't, we couldn't do it, it can't be done. And I thought to myself, I don't like that word can't. 
and I truly believe that it can be done. But the lesson in it is just what some of the other speakers said tonight. It's not me, I'm, I'm just an instrumentality of the project. It's all of the people that come together to make the process happen. Most agencies, from what I understand, take 18 months to two years to stand up, and that's just with the agency. We decided to be overachievers and add a 911 dispatch center. We're 14 minutes into, the, uh, excuse me, 14 months into the project, and with any luck at all, sometime around April Fool, Fool's Day, we'll have a real April Fool's for the naysayers. I would just like to say one last thing, and that is the power of people when they come together and work together. I told Scott when we started the project and spoke with the city council and said, we'll be lucky if we can get 14 sets of boots on the ground by the time we're ready to start up. The department's designed to be 31 staffed. I'm very happy to tell everyone in this room that I anticipate by May we will be 100% staffed. Um, and the only thing I would add to that is why. Why is that happening? And, and please, I don't mean to embarrass you folks, but city council manager and the staff of the police department, if you just please stand up, I could not do this without them. And, who, and this is the last point that I wish to make tonight. There are, there are men and women in this room, a couple of which have 31 years experience in their former agencies. They chose to come to Wasco to be part of something new and they believed in the vision. They believed that, in fact, we can make law enforcement work, even in the onerous environment that we're currently working in. And they had the faith in me, they had the faith in the city council and the manager to come and take that risk. They could have very easily stayed where they were at. Some of them took pay cuts to come to work for us. And I think it's because they are truly dedicated to the profession and they understand what we're trying to do. My beautiful daughter and my soon-to-be son-in-law are here from Montana tonight, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention my daughter, Janelle, my son, Aaron, and my incredible staff at the uh, Wasco Police Department. Thank you all so much. School districts across the country are seeing the benefits of upgrading their facilities to be more energy efficient. Efforts toward replacing gas-powered vehicles with new vans, buses and cars that are low emissions, and installing solar panels at various school sites is really making a difference in reducing the carbon footprint for our environment. In Kern County, two elementary school districts, a community college, and one university have been able to benefit from substantial changes all thanks to one individual, Marcos Rodriguez. Delano Union School District is where Marcos began his career in public education. Here, the introduction of compressed natural gas vehicles reduced diesel emissions by 80% and cost almost half the cost of the fuel being used. At Bakersfield City School District, the implementation of CNG fuel, hybrid, and electric vehicles was also instituted. Modernization of old buildings and new construction projects were completed. Centralized irrigation control system projects were implemented in both districts, saving water and operational costs as well. And money saved from solar system energy production at both districts were reintegrated into academic and operational programming. While employed at California State University Bakersfield, Marcos created plans for tree programming and irrigation management across all of the campus property. And at Bakersfield College, Marcos played a major role in the development of three solar projects. Marcos' effort in providing environmental resources that assist with conservation will serve each of the educational institutions long after he's moved on, as well as set standards for other districts to follow. Kern Cog congratulates Marcos Rodriguez with the 
Ken Volpe Award of Merit in Environmental Resources and Conservation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, again, thanks to the Kern Council of Governments. This is really an honor for me. I am a lifelong resident of Kern County. I was born 32 miles north of here in the town of Delano. Uh, I have been fortunate enough to be a Delano Tiger, a Bakersfield Renegade, a CSUB Roadrunner, and a Cal Poly San Luis Obispo Mustang. So with that being said, even more fortunate that I've been able to come back to work at my elementary school district, my junior college, and even my uh, undergrad school here at CSUB. So with that being said, I've been very blessed uh, with the support of the different administrations, but more importantly, the teams that I've worked with over the past uh, 20 years in education. If you notice in some of the pictures there, you saw me standing by a, a, in the seat of a cab over tractor, all electric cab over tractor. In my former life, I was actually a tr uh, truck driver, owner operator for nine years. Uh, I, I was, Fortunate enough to be there in 1988, showing some years here, in 1988 with the introduction of computer uh, fuel-injected pumps and, the, and the, all the issues that they had with them. And I can remember being broken down on the side of the road in Kalinga on Jane Avenue. And I thought, is this really worth it? But from those lessons learned from that type of experience, it, it inspired me. There's, there's things that we can probably do better. And with that, uh, in these last 20 years in my ROM here, in education, I've experimented with many things. Prior to the education uh, career that I took on, I was in production farming, uh, Paramount Farming Company, now Wonderful Orchards. Uh, Stuart Resnick, for the folks that know him, uh, I remember him saying in a meeting, for every 10 things that we try, two may have possibilities, and one may actually work. We'll hit the home run. And I've always taken that to heart and with the different experiences that we had on the farm, uh, when I was, uh, I was based here in Lost Hills, Button Willow, uh, that area, and all the west side up to Kettleman City. With that being said, we tried many different things. I was very fortunate, the course of study that I uh, was pursuing, uh, some of the researchers that I read about, I actually got to work with. We conducted uh, pilot studies across different ranches. So I took that knowledge employed there and I brought it back to the school districts where I ended up going uh, to work with. So currently, I actually am working with Lawrence Berkeley Labs to conduct a, a pilot study on heat pumps at Bakersfield College. I've worked with Argonne uh, National Labs. We have a standing relationship with uh, National Renewable Energy Labs out of Colon, Colorado with our own internal group called California Renewable Energy Labs at the uh, Kern Community College District. And so we have many projects that are going on. Uh, it's been really important for me to give back to the community. I, I've been a board member uh, with formerly, it was National Health Services, uh, Omni Health for a few years. I uh, worked quite diligently with the American Lung Association of California and fundraising with them. Uh, I, you know, I know it's tough. We have tough air quality here in, in Kern County, but you know, I, I think there's a way over time that we can overcome that. I'm a big tree, a big tree advocate. Uh, while on the farm, I was involved with many people, and it does take a village to make things happen, uh, with the planting of over two and a half million trees. Uh, I took that love of trees, and I brought it into the landscape realm at the uh, various di districts that I've been at. With that being said, I've been involved, well, fortunately, with groups like the Tree Foundation of Kern, uh, Project Cleaner, which I sit on the board of currently, uh, Amen Lao, to my, right in front of me here, is, is one of my uh, co-board members there. And so what, what has happened there that we can, we've actually been able to bring trees to different school districts through grants and through uh, donations from the community. So we've been very fortunate with that. At Bakersfield College, one of the highlights that have taken place in the last couple of years for me is that uh, Bakersfield College, for that, those that don't know, uh, we actually are acknowledged by the uh, National Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of Tree, Tree City USA. I, I know that was a designation with the city at one time, and hopefully they'll have it again. Uh, we were actually, they have a Tree Campus Higher Education program that we were nominated for 21, 22. We got our application in for 23. Hopefully that'll happen. And just last May, our campus was recognized, a worldwide recognition, as an ARMNET campus. 
Uh, that was a designation by the Morton Arboretum, the Morton Salt people in Chicago, and uh, our camps, all Bakersfield College campuses are now all official arboretums. So with that being said, I think it's really important that if you have a desire to do things, like I said, you know, it starts with an idea, but again, it takes support. It takes many people around to make this happen, as everybody has said here uh, before uh, I've come up to the podium here. But with that, um, I want to thank again everybody that's helped me along the way, uh, my spouse and my daughter that couldn't be here this evening, but colleagues and members of the community. And uh, I'll give out a shout out to Linda Arata. Uh, I don't think she's here, but uh, she, she's been very helpful as well along the way. And um, again, thank you. Another huge milestone for Bakersfield was celebrated in 2023 with the 50th anniversary of Golden Empire Transit District. As part of their celebration, GetBus chose to develop a full year campaign to help raise awareness of the importance of public transportation and the effects it has on our community. The strategy around this campaign was all about fun. Get wanted the community to party like it was 1973 and they went all out to let everyone know. Besides their decorative groovy disco themed buses driving all over town, Get helped out at 20 pop-up events serving food, music, games, and scratches for prizes. They coordinated a luncheon for current and past board members and created paper buses that were the same groovy design for the 50th anniversary and encouraged residents to collect all five designs for a scratcher that provided cool prizes from Git, including items from swag to 50 cent pieces and cash in the amounts of 50 to $500. All this planning and community involvement did not go without some real merit. Git has seen a steady increase of 20% on their fixed bus routes and a 50% increase on the on-demand microtransit paratransit services. And the credit to this creativity and thorough planning goes to Get's marketing department. The marketing team worked tirelessly to make sure this anniversary was one for the record books. It was important to them to go out into the community and share the numerous benefits of public transit. And having fun was definitely the biggest benefit overall. At the same time, Git was able to interact with their writers and potential writers and to educate them on how safe, efficient, and how affordable mass transit can be. The public is anxious to see what Git has in store for their next big anniversary, but until then, we can enjoy the perks offered by Git on a daily basis, such as easy to use writer apps, curb to curb service, and friendly and outgoing drivers. Please join me in congratulating GetBus for their innovative marketing campaign for the 50th anniversary celebration. Accepting this award is Get's marketing coordinator, Kathleen McNeil. Before I start sharing with you all the excitement that we had last year, I'm going to ask our new CEO, he's not been with us a month, Michael Tree to stand up. <laughs> and I encourage you to give him a warm Kern County welcome and introduce yourself and let him know where the best places are for food and fun and how wonderful Kern County really is. Um, in the short time that I've spent with him, he's got some big visions for our community. And whether you depend on the bus or not, I promise you it's going to impact our community for the better and we will all benefit. Next, I want to introduce Carlos Bayo. If you'll stand up. Carl <laughs> Carlos, and I want you to know I'm on my tippy toes here. Um, Carlos is one of our board members. And he is responsible in us making it to 50. And we're well on our way to our 51st year. And so we thank him for his service. And um, it was a blast last year. Um, we did, as they mentioned, we did over 20 pop-up events. I can't tell you how gratifying it was to be in the community and meet folks uh, that appreciate our service, uh, meeting young people, 
at BC and CSUB that depend on our service, uh, and just the excitement. And this young lady, where are you hiding? Nicole, she snuck back to her seat. Uh, stand up for me. Okay. So this young lady is our graphics designer. All the colorful, fun buses and all everything that was had to do with our uh, celebration, she was responsible for. It was so fun to go out in the community. People responded to the flower power and the disco ball, and uh, it was just a party all year long. So thank you everyone for your support. We appreciate this award. I promise you more great things are coming, and um, please introduce yourself to Michael. Thank you. Anyone who travels Highway 58 on their way to Las Vegas has encountered the dreaded line of trucks trying to climb up the Tehachapi grade near Keene. For years, maybe even decades, the city of Tehachapi and Kerncog have been fighting to secure funding for a truck climbing lane. Well, the day has come where that money has been found, and thanks largely to the help of Senator Shannon Grove, the long-awaited truck climbing lane heading east on Highway 58 is coming closer to a reality. Long-serving Kern Council of Governments board member Phil Smith has always said that this is a regional issue, not a city of Tehachapi issue. However, it does impact Tehachapi residents who use Highway 58, many using it every day. The truck climbing lane will make the highway safer for all commuters, travelers, and the truck drivers who play a vital role in our local economy. As a member of the California Senate with oversight of Caltrans, Senator Grove played a critical role in directly advocating the importance and urgency of this project. She coordinated several critical meetings with Caltrans leadership to accelerate funding for a truck climbing lane on eastbound 58 through the Tehachapi Mountains. Without this push by Senator Grove, these efforts likely would have remained separated and of lower urgency to the state. Senator Grove's ability to see the critical local and regional value of this project testifies to her dedication to her constituents and is greatly appreciated. This is a very important regional project. Uh, not just for Tehachapi, for Bakersfield, for the region, and it's a very critical safety project, and we really appreciate your help on this. Congratulations to the State Senator Shannon Grove as the elected official recipient of Daryl Hildebrand Distinguished Leadership Award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this, this was a team, and the vision started over 25 years ago uh, with Phil absolutely um, leading the charge and many people participating in this project over the years. Um, Phil Smith, the current city council member and, and uh, the former mayor and Kern Cog uh, board member, really worked hard and was dedicated to this adventure that I found myself in at the very end. Um, Jay is the development and service director. He did such a great job. Key budge. Um, was just incredible. It took the entire team to make this happen. Greg Garrett, the c city manager of Tehachapi, and um, Mayor Michael Davies, when you talk about the H Tehachapi team. I got a phone call from them, and um, they kind of broke down what they needed and what was going on, and that we were going to be overlooked again for the second or two decades, basically, and we were going to be overlooked again. And um, that's when I uh, reached out to Aaron Akimi, which I'm just gonna spend one minute on. Aaron Akimi is one of the most kind-hearted, brilliant people I've ever met in my entire life. He really is. I have to be honest with you, sometimes I'm like, okay, break it down to me, tell me what I'm asking for and what we need. And I'd spend 20 minutes on the phone and then I'd have to take the notes that I wrote from Aaron, call Greg and go, can you translate this for me? Um, because he is, you know, I'm Aaron Brockovich, you send me and I will go, but I need to know what I'm going after. And um, so Aaron Akimi was one of the most incredible people that I've had the opportunity to work with, and he has just a, a kind, soft, spoken, um, very brilliant individual, if I can say that. 
uh, Tony Travaris, who is the director of Caltrans, um, is just, uh, I had met him a few months prior to in a confirmation appointment, and he said, if I ever needed anything, to please give me a call, and he gave me a cell phone number. So I just reached out, and with, um, with Greg's translation of what Aaron told me to ask for, um, I reached out and I said, hi, sir, I said, I need $274 million for the truck climbing lane in Tehachapi. And he said, yes, man, we've heard from Tehachapi lots of times. I go, it's not about Tehachapi. It's about the state of California, this east-west corridor. It's vital. If this thing goes down and the, the safety hazards that we have on this road, um, people are going to go to 580 to get all the way across, and I'm going to hold you accountable for it. And um, I think it was just 24 hours later, they called back and said, let's have a meeting. Now, I have to tell you that I had to get onto my team at the meeting because they had to have several meetings before and they were not being very polite to the director of Caltrans. And I'm like, just say thank you. It's all I want you to do is just say thank you. And so they said thank you and I think about 30 days later, they gave us the $275 million that we needed to make sure that not just to Hatchaby, but the state of California was taken care of. It was um, definitely my honor to be able to work on this. It started 25 years ago. That team at that table and that team at that table and Aaron Akimia at Kern Cog were really the people who made this happen and should receive this award. All I did is say, I want my money and we deserve it. Thank you. Many people have asked Maricopa City Administrator Eric Ziegler why Maricopa, to which he always responds, I love tough cases. Maricopa in the beginning era of Eric's administration in 2011 was definitely considered a tough case, with a grand jury finding that the city should explore disincorporation, to which Eric responded that there is no evidence to suggest that the citizens of Maricopa are interested in disincorporation. So he rolled up his sleeves and got to work to fight for the smallest incorporated city in Kern County of just 1,020 residents, using his years of experience in restoring structural integrity to a well-worn project. Eric graduated from Michigan State University in 1966 and had originally attended college to become an engineer. But there was not a meeting of the minds when it came to the math needed for that degree. So he switched gears and majored in advertising. He worked in several jobs in communications and HR before accepting his first city manager job for the city of Barstow. He went on to serve as the city manager for Taft and Glendora before being approached by one of Maricopa's city council members who knew all of the great work Eric had accomplished in prior city manager roles. Eric was convinced to take on one more tough case. So in 2011, he became the helmsman of the city and chartered a course that would bring Maricopa back to its feet. He went on to acquire funding to replace failing existing infrastructure, grants for three parks, and procured SB1 funding for streets, state and local recovery funds, REAP and LEAP funding, successfully drafting and completing the housing element of the general plan on his own instead of hiring a consultant so that he could save the city money, and he stood his ground to prevent the city from disincorporating. Eric has seen many hours working on city issues and all while only accepting $100 a month as his pay. His integrity has never wavered and his perseverance has been steadfast. He has been a team builder and a reconciler when there have been differences. Eric truly has been a giant in the land of city managers. Please join us in congratulating Eric Ziegler as the public official recipient of the Daryl Hildebrand Distinguished Leadership Award. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Well, good evening, folks. I'd like to thank the COG for this award. I appreciate it. More importantly, I'm happy to say, as Mark Twain once said, that the reports of our death in Maricopa is greatly exaggerated. <laughs> We're doing some good things. Uh, we've got our sewer project that they tried to fund for 25 or 30 years out to bid. The open bids uh, Thursday, in fact. So we're coming along. While I'm here, I want to acknowledge my city council. Our mayor, Corey Morris, is here. Our mayor, Virgil, our mayor pro tem, Virgil Bell, couldn't make it. Our 
Councilman Crump is here. I believe Councilman Albright is here somewhere. Councilman, oh, there he is. Hi, Dick. And I don't want to forget Councilman Owens, who also couldn't make it tonight, or our Mayor Pro Tem Virgil Bell. I also want to acknowledge my partners in crime, Lori Robinson, Doreen Horn. I mean, they do the work. I just sit to give the instructions. But that's not bad. This is my 13th year in Maricopa. And uh, like I say, we're doing some good things and hope to do more. At least I hope to live long enough to do a little more. So thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate it. And I'll be back next year to see who wins next year. <laughs>
being part of an organization that was supposed to solve issues. And they said, I complained that you're not solving anything, you guys aren't doing anything. And I said, well, if you want to get to do something, get elected. And sure enough, I ran for office and I won. And I've been running ever since. <laughs> but uh, it, it gives me great hope to see what, what's going on in Kern County. We're growing, especially our cities that need a lot of assistance from our elected officials in Sacramento. And I, we get that from, from our state senator and also from our assemblyman and woman uh, to help with what's going on in Kern County, because we're the happening. And we just want to make sure that we get a piece of pie. Ron Brumley, I was on the city council when Ron was running the current cog. And Eric Ziegler was also there, and he was involved with, with I met Eric for the first time. We were dealing with ACAP, cities with prisons. Remember that, Eric? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the lawsuit, we won. <laughs> we, we had a lot of battles, but we, we created jobs and created facilities and, and incarcerated a lot of people. But, but, uh, but uh, it, it kept the economy strong in, in, in Kern County. But, but uh, the, back then, there was a lot of things going on that we needed to be part of, and we were elected to do that in ourselves. But again, it's just the idea that, that uh, you, you do something for, for the love of the game. It basically is that you enjoy being and getting involved and see what's going on to make sure that we have a better quality of life. And I thank you for all for being here. And I, I want to thank Kern Conk again for, for selecting me and, and uh, for this prestigious award. Thank you. Dr. Schaefer's 39-year career in education has been extraordinary. From beginning his career as a math teacher at East High School in 1985 to his current role as the 21st superintendent of the Kern High School District, the largest high school district in California. His journey reflects a steadfast commitment to the growth and success of both students and educators. What sets Dr. Schaefer apart is his multifaceted impact as an advocate, teacher, mentor, and leader. As superintendent, he has tirelessly championed programs and initiatives to ensure that all students have opportunities to graduate prepared for success, both in the workplace and at the post-secondary level. One of his most significant contributions has been the expansion of career and technical education and college and career readiness programs within the Kern High School District. In addition to the career training facility, the Regional Occupational Center, Dr. Schaefer's visionary leadership led to the opening of the district's second state-of-the-art career training facility in 2021, the Career Technical Education Center, a facility that has not only set the standard for CTE programs, but has also become a model for other districts statewide. Dr. Schaefer's leadership also extends to the dual enrollment program, a collaboration with the Kern Community College District and California State University Bakersfield. Some of the benefits of dual enrollment include students earning college credit while in high school, finishing college in less time and reducing the cost for completing their degree. Strengthening the partnerships with local colleges and universities is another huge benefit. Moreover, Dr. Schaefer has dedicated his life to community service. Dr. Brian Schaefer's leadership, innovation, and unwavering dedication have left an indelible mark on the educational landscape in Kern County, shaping the future for countless students and educators. This legacy will continue to inspire generations to come. Kern Cog congratulates Dr. Brian Schaefer with a Ronald E. Brummett Lifetime Achievement Award, public official. Thank you. Great work. Thank you. First of all, thank you to KernCog for this award. As I was telling a friend the other day what I was going to be doing uh, on my 35th day of retirement. So the video didn't get that, but for five weeks I've been retired, which is a really, really nice job. Um, <laughs> but I said the way you get one of these jobs is, or one of these awards, it's very nice, but you have to be old. Um, so so I, I understand that uh, old, old guys and old gals get these awards. Um, but I couldn't do it, first of all, I want to thank the Lord for giving me health uh, to, to serving in the Kern High School District for just shy of 39 years. 
Um, the last 10 is superintendent. And if you wanted to be a superintendent during COVID, it was just a great time. Uh, but also to get these awards, you have to be surrounded by some pretty cool people. Now, I don't know those of you who know Michael Turnipseed, if you ever describe him as being cool, but he's one cool guy. So, so Michael, thank you for nominating for me for this award. <laughs> um, secondly, you have to be surrounded by some people who are not of shady character, but Dr. Mary Barlow, who you're going to meet here in a bit, a few months ago in her retirement, she referred to me as her partner in crime. I just want to go on record, we've never been convicted. <laughs> um, and, and also I want to thank the teachers. Um, Mr. Pendergrass, I remember your name because I've been around a while. I don't know why you ever left the Kern High School District, but congratulations to the teachers and Mr. Ziegler for being here. You always have to remember, administrators who get these awards, it's the teachers in the classroom. Those are the people doing the work. So, so never forget that. And certainly last but not least, my wife Beth is here. Stand up. Um, she's got her personal bodyguard, Mr. Ramon Hendricks, the Greenfield superintendent here with her as well. So I appreciate you all for being here. Um, it has been a heck of a run, uh, but the, the Kern County community is better off for what we do with career technical education in this county as evidenced by the Taft Award tonight and the work that the district is doing and all the feeder schools. So please get behind these programs. If you're a business, a business person, please, when you're called upon to come and speak to these kids about your life experiences, please be there for our community. Thank you. Just 26 miles west of Bakersfield sits the unincorporated community of Buttonwillow, a small town with a population of just over 1,300 people, Button Willow encompasses just 6.9 square miles. It might be best known for its cotton industry, but if you were to ask most of its neighboring communities, Button Willow is home of its star resident, Regina Houchin, one of their most valuable assets to the agriculture, water, and public utility districts throughout the county. Regina and her husband Albert, along with their four children and nine grandchildren, all live in Button Willow. It is and always has been her home, but her service doesn't stop there. She is the owner of Ag Center and has provided bookkeeping and financial services to many private and public entities, including mutual water companies and public districts. Regina has taken great effort to learn the operations and management of community water and sewer systems and has been a great resource to new board members and the districts they operate. She provides practical, due diligence recommendations to the board she serves and has shared her knowledge and expertise with numerous valley, mountain and desert water systems that are too small to maintain a full-time staff. She has helped to organize water system accounts in the communities of Weldon, helped a system along Weed Patch Highway reorganize to receive funds to replace a failed well, helped Mettler, Buttonwillow Land of Promise, and other small communities obtain and manage county, state, and federal funding to build strong community infrastructures. Her management and assistance in obtaining federal block grant funds has enabled the Westside community to have clean drinking water and her work with the local Buttonwillow Union School District Board, Buttonwillow Recreation and Park District, Buttonwillow Community Foundation, and Buttonwillow Water District speaks volumes about her dedication to the betterment of Buttonwillow in all aspects. One word to describe Regina, she is an original and Kern County is lucky to have her. Kerncog congratulates Regina Houchin and presents her with the Ronald E. Brummett Lifetime Achievement Award for Private Citizen. Well, I'm truly honored to be the recipient of this award, although there are so many facets of my life that are all due to the fact that I'm surrounded by a great family that has supported me, 
the many nights that I've been in board meetings or somewhere else instead of home. But tonight I have my husband and my four grown children, and so I'm very pleased to have them with me. Uh, this job that I've encountered over my life was not one that I would have chosen. I didn't think I would be a public speaker, be able to take on a challenge, but I do have the heart. And I believe God's gifts are not to be wasted. And so it's been a pleasure to be of service to these communities and to use my gift of administration and service by helping others. The act of service would not have been possible without the complete support of all the people around me. I've had engineers that I can call, self-help enterprises that I know they know my voice just by saying, hello, is so-and-so there? They know they've always been there to help me and to um, provide the answers that I didn't have. And my communities, because I, even when I'm at a board meeting in Lands of Promise or Mettler, they're my community, whether I live there or not. And they've always been there to accept my advice or to tell me what they want. And I think that's the important part of my job was to listen, hear what their needs were, and then to act on those needs and to present to whether it be a supervisor or whoever was available to listen. And so I'm only the vessel. I was only the vessel and from what I was able to pour out was with love and consideration for all humankind and I really do appreciate this award and thank you very much. You can't find a more innovative and collaborative leader in education than Dr. Mary Barlow. Throughout her career as the leader of the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, she has focused on closing the achievement gaps in education and has worked to bring together governmental organizations and business leaders to solve complex problems. Dr. Barlow started teaching 30 years ago in the Kern River Valley. After she began teaching, she recognized the need in her community. One of the first initiatives started by her was the creation of the Kern River Valley Collaborative in 2000 to meet the needs and improve outcomes for children and families in the Lake Isabella and Kern River Valley areas. This collaborative continues to meet and has a general membership of over 100 partners. In 2009, Dr. Barlow joined the Kern County Superintendent of Schools team in the Fiscal Crisis Management Assistance Team. In her tenure, she also served as the Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Accountability. In 2017, she was appointed as the Kern County Superintendent of Schools. One of the most significant contributions of Dr. Barlow's career was the formation of the Kern Education Pledge, which is a cradle-to-career initiative in Kern County that focuses on improving outcomes for all students regardless of the zip code in which they reside. The Kern Education Pledge was established in 2017 by Dr. Barlow and the Kern County Superintendent of Schools and is comprised of leaders from Kern's 46 school districts, institutes of higher education, the private sector, and the larger community, who have committed to working together as one system to improve outcomes for all students as they move through the cradle to career continuum. Dr. Barlow retired last June and leaves behind a legacy of work that will forever impact students and families in Kern County. Please join us in congratulating Dr. Mary Barlow with the Chairman's Award. So first of all, I'm very humbled and honored. And as I was sitting there watching the video, I thought, oh God, I'm wearing the same dress. <laughs> I'm really frugal, guys. <laughs> so um, and, the, and women, come on, you know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> the body of work that really I, I'm being recognized for tonight, and, and I accept this award on behalf of all educators in Kern County is accomplished because of the many people in Kern County, both in business, public agencies, and education who come together to do the work that, that was described. 
And here at this table, we have some remarkable partners who have done this. You've heard about Dr. Brian Schaefer and how he transformed the Kern High School District. And, Dr. and Ramon Hendricks, I call him doctor because he really is, and what he's done with the Greenfield Union School District. And you also have Michael Turnipseed here, who has been a friend and a, a person who we can go to for 25 years to assist with extremely difficult decisions related to bond issuance, as well as fighting for better literacy for Kern County students. I've also been working very closely and consider her to be a champion for all education, Dr. Lisa Gilbert. She is the co-architect and the really an educational leader who has transformed Kern County. I'd like her to stand up for a moment because she should be up here with me. Yes. She made this vision a reality. And it's true, you've heard it tonight, together we can achieve great things on behalf of all Kern residents when we work toward a common goal and we put our egos at the door. We check, check those egos at the door. Um, as, we were as has been demonstrated tonight, Kern County is filled with a lot of remarkable people. I'm very fortunate that my husband moved us here 30 years ago to take a, a position over at the China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station, Department of Defense, 35 years ago, I just did that wrong, didn't I? Steve Barlow. <laughs> I'm really grateful to be a part of this distinguished group. You know, leaders can have an impact um, when we build a system and when we have people around who believe in and will support that system. But the true test of leadership and of the system and that common cause is when we sustain it, when leaders change. And so that is my hope and my desire for the Kern Education Pledge, for the kids system, uh, which is a data system, is that that's, that work gets sustained. The 46 districts continue to work with institutes of higher education and come together to benefit all children in Kern County. In Kern, we serve students who um, have many different backgrounds, speak many different languages, they um, have different lived experiences. 30% um, of the kids we serve live in poverty, 30%. So we had to build a system and keep that in mind that would improve outcomes for all children, regardless of the zip code in which they reside or the circumstances of their home life. In that system, I know now that a kindergarten, kindergartner who enters school this year will have a more robust classroom instruction in literacy and mathematics, and that is be based on countywide outcome data and shared trainings across 46 districts. Teachers and administrators will have access to real-time data to make informed decisions and add supports for a struggling child before they fall behind. And students have access to state-of-the-art, relevant career technical education that connects the classroom to their adult work life. Families will be supported with services that will build their resiliency and self-sufficiency. So, we still have a long way to go. But we know that education is the great equalizer. And we know that an informed and educated citizen builds a better society. Through education, we ensure that every person can become a contributing member. And the public education system is the one of our country's greatest achievements. I'm proud to be a part of that history. I thank you for this honor tonight. God bless. It is always, for me, such an encouraging evening to celebrate a portion of all the good that is being done in Kern County. So many people working together can make so many good things happen. This brings us to the end of our program. Please join me in one last round of applause for all of our recipients.
If you'd like to stick around for more photos, our photographer is available to take your pictures. Thank you so much for coming, and please bicycle home safely.